COVID admission rates in the US has jumped by 18% and in the UK, a new strain has caused enough concern that the vaccination program has been brought forward by a month. Now, overall COVID numbers are down and this variant doesn't appear to cause more serious illness than others. So how concerned should we be about this? Should we all be worried about this? Has this all been blown out of proportion? How can you best protect yourself? These are the questions we'll be answering today. If you're new here, my name is Dr. Khalid. I'm a family doctor from London, so let's dive straight in. A new dominant variant of the virus is taking hold in the US and it's EG.5, unofficially known as Eris. And meanwhile, in the UK, the BA286 variant, aka Parola, is peaking interest after an outbreak in a care home. The result is 28 cases confirmed and five hospitalizations. When it comes to the Eris variant, the WHO reports that this variant is not resulting in more cases or deaths than its predecessors like Omicron or Delta. And for Parola, there isn't enough data yet, as the first case was only just over a month ago. Also, like, who comes up with these names? Parola sounds more like a soft alcoholic beverage than a new variant, but anyway, I digress. So far, there have been cases, one of the key ones, uh, there was an outbreak in a care home, 28 people got ill, no deaths as of yet with that outbreak. So with time and as more data comes out, we'll build a better picture as to what is going on. On the positive side, there are some new studies, one in China, which has not yet been peer reviewed, but it found that Parola is not as efficient at infecting cells in a lab setting compared with other circulating Omicron subvariants. Another study in Sweden found that only a modest drop in how well serum from blood donors could neutralize the Parola variant compared with other variants, meaning that both previous vaccination and infection gives you pretty good level of protection. While this is all good news, these are lab studies in a controlled environment, and we know things can behave differently in the community. So definitely we need more studies, peer-reviewed studies and also data from real-world events. But there are some big hurdles to understanding new variants. Compared to when the Omicron variant spread in late 2021, there's far less information around these outbreaks, mainly because we're not doing as much testing. We're basically at the stage of the pandemic where testing is not done as much as before and it makes accurate estimates of infection numbers quite difficult. So the key parameter to look for on this one would be hospitalization rates. And if you look at the US hospitalization rates, you can see a twin peak pattern appearing. Often you'll see one peak around about the middle of the summer, August time maybe, and that can sometimes be related to people going on holiday, mixing, travel, restrictions being reduced. As with many other viruses like the flu, there seems to be some seasonal incidents where the numbers go up around winter times as well. The first step is if you think you've got COVID-19, well, do a test and check. If you follow this channel from the beginning, you'll know that we've made videos from the start of the pandemic about COVID clinics, COVID hubs, and things like that. And while hopefully we won't ever go back to to those stages, I have seen a shift of people's attitudes towards the virus. There's been this kind of fatigue about COVID in general, and it's understandable. People have heard about it so much, they're probably completely sick of it. But I am seeing that people also are not testing as much as they could have. I'm seeing more cases of people with coughs, temperatures, shortness of breath who haven't even done a COVID test. And when you ask whether they thought about it, they say, well, isn't COVID something like a common cold nowadays? Well, unfortunately, history has a way of teaching us that events can repeat themselves, especially if we get more complacent. So while this variant may be another in a long list of variants for the future, I still think we have to be vigilant. I don't think there's any harm in that. While new variants may not be as deadly as the first wave or the Omicron wave, it is mainly down to the vaccination efforts and the incredible uptake from the public. And while I still see the odd anti-vax sentiment in the comments, I still do think that people widely did appreciate the vaccination rollouts, the huge impact it had on controlling the viruses. People may be pissed about how their governments approached it, things like party gay, where people were dancing and having a jolly good time whilst other people were dying. Don't think you could argue about the vaccination rollout, I think it had a huge impact in helping the country. The winter vaccinations are being rolled out into care homes in the next couple of weeks, and after that it will be for everybody over the age of 65 if they wanted it. And as always, if you test positive for COVID, it's always a good idea to stay indoors, avoid contact with other people. In the UK it's advised that it should be for at least five days. And if you live with other people who may also get infected, it's important to open windows, wear masks in communal areas, those kind of common sensible things you would think about. And of course, course, importantly, and people whose COVID symptoms are becoming more severe, or if you're experiencing chest pains, coughing up blood, shortness of breath, then you should attend an emergency department 
or you can call the emergency number 999 in the UK or 911 in the US. I'll try my best to keep you updated and if there are any new worthwhile developments then you'll see a video. If you don't see any videos it probably means this variant fizzled out, which would be a fantastic thing. For now stay happy, healthy and have a lovely day. Peace out.